friends. This is Salt City Knits, a podcast about my making and my knitting and crocheting specifically. I'm Emily and I'm recording in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today is July, what day is it? July 11th. <laughs> it's July 11th and I'm happy to be back with you today. You can find me at Salt City Knits on Instagram and on Ravelry, and you can find my patterns on Ravelry and also at yarnbrary.com. And all that information is down below. And I've just joined Threads, although I don't know what I'm doing there, as I think might be the case for a lot of us that have just joined. So come and follow me and we'll figure it out together. Today I have um, knitting. I have three finished objects. Yes, three finished objects and I have several works in progress, most of which are crochet, believe it or not. And um, I have pattern updates, um, pattern news, and also a book recommendation. So let's dive in. I'm going to try and be relatively quick today because my kids have friends coming over and I want to record before they get here. So wish me luck. All right, finished objects. First off, I'm super excited to show this is finished object and pattern news. And I'm excited to show my newest design that is um, I've just finished with. Um, so this is as of yet unnamed, as of now, yet unnamed. I am doing great. It is still unnamed, but it's this new crescent shaped shawl with this really fun ruffle at the bottom. Look at that. I love it. <laughs> so I have knit this shawl in two gorgeous candy shop yarns colorways from her mermaid collection this colorway is called mermaid's kiss and this one is seaside sunset and they are so fun so this is just a two skein shawl but it really does make the most of those two skeins i had so much fun designing this and knitting it. Um, and I really love the details on it. I love the I-cord edge at the top and the bottom. I love the fun way that it knits up. And um, just, it's just so much fun. And that ruffle is just, it's so good. <laughs> so yeah, it's just really big. So I'm going to put some pictures in here, but this pattern, um, I'm probably going to be testing it in August and releasing it in September. And if you have suggestions of Salt Lake City or Utah based names, you could definitely put those in the comment below, but I just really love it. I love that ruffle. I think it's so fun when you can find ways to um, utilize stash yarn. And I think this would be a great stash buster. Although, candy shop yarns, I mean, hello, so pretty. So, it, like I said, it takes two skeins of yarn and you just get so much out of it. A lot of times I find that a two, two skein shawl is just, I like a long shawl. I like to be able to wrap it multiple ways, you know, maybe come twice around my neck or do it like a kerchief style. And so I like it to have some length to it. And I really enjoy this. I'm really happy with it. So that is my first finished object. And, um, I did have to knit this ruffle two and a half times to try and get it as roughly as I wanted. And I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. It's so pretty. So yeah, and one of the things I wish you could see in this video is how sparkly this yarn is. 
Unfortunately, sparkles rarely show up. Oh, let's see. I don't think you can see it at all. It's so sparkly in person, you guys. Oh, I wish you could see. Oh, there's tiny little bits and hints there, but it's so sparkly. I love it. A good sparkly yarn is always going to be on my list of favorites. All right, so that is my currently unnamed shawl, but I love it. My second finished object, you guys, I talked about this last time, but can I just rave again about Pacific Northwest? I'm guessing it's Pacific Northwest, PNW Pearls. PNW Pearls, I love her yarn. And this color is Stars and Stripes Forever. And I know I talked about this yarn, but I don't think I had cast these on last time. I knit these socks super fast. Look how cute these are. Oh my gosh, I love them so much. I absolutely loved knitting these socks. I love this base. It's just such a great base. And her color stripes are so sharp. And the patterning, oh, and they're so even. It's just so beautiful. I absolutely loved knitting these. So one of the fun things for me is that with this wide stripe of the blue and white speckly, you know, the stars part of the stars and stripes, I was able to knit my heel flap with that. And I think I had one row of the red at the end of the heel flap but that blends right into the heel turn and it just looks so good right there. I love how it is laid out. So this was knit on, uh, it's a 64 stitch sock and I of course knit it as usual on a 2.25 millimeter needle. I always use Chow Goo Red Lace and I like 40 inch cables to do magic loops. So I um, was able to just time things and place that so it just, is that little square at my heel flap. And I love these. And I think they turned out so great. They were so fun. So basically I just knit until I knew I was changing into that blue and that's where I started my heel flap. And that really worked out. I think I did actually make this heel flap. Normally I make them 32 rows or you know, 16 slip stitches. You know how you count them up like that um, deep. This one is 15 just because I wanted to really fit that in, but it fits me great. So I'm kind of like, maybe I don't need the 32 rows. I only need the 30 rows. So anyway, it turned out so good and I love them. I had thought about putting in contrast heels and toes. I had actually planned to do that. But then when I realized that I was gonna hit, you know, pretty typical, my, my typical uh, leg length, I was getting really close to that. I thought, I'm gonna see if I can make that work. And I really love how they turned out. They're so fun. And I just can't recommend her yarn enough. Love it. I have another whole skein of this. And I have three other colorways that I bought from her. I'm super excited to knit those up. But they're gonna have to pause for a minute because I'll show you my other projects that I'm making. Okay. These were a blast. This was my third finished pair for Summer Sock Camp. And I've mentioned Summer Sock Camp very briefly in the last couple of episodes, but I just wanted to clarify for anybody who might not know what Summer Sock Camp is, that it is just a knit along that is being hosted by Kay Litton, who is the crazy sock lady. Um, and it's just a, a big knit along where you knit socks through the summer. So, um, yeah, that is all it is. And it's really fun because socks are so great during the summer when things are hot and you don't want a big pile of knitting in your lap and you're busy going here and there with activities and it's easy to take with you. It's just great. Summer so Socks are great in the summer. Okay, so that was my second finished object. And my third finished object is another pair of socks. And these are for my son-in-law, 
who is very excited about hand knit socks. I had made him a pair last year. I think it was Christmas, but I could be wrong. It might have just been, I don't know, just because, because I do that. Um, but I had made a pair last year and he has loved them. And I thought, okay, he definitely needs more. But he is like my son Isaac, where they have large feet and it just takes a lot of knitting. So I used 95 grams to knit these socks. So, you know, that's a lot of sock knitting. Just to give you an idea, these were, I think, 65 grams. So I don't know. It's really only 30 grams of yarn. I don't know why it seems like so much more. But, you know, when you get used to like knitting socks in your rhythm, because I knit a lot of my, both my daughters and I all wear the same size socks. And so I knit lots of socks in that size. And so when I have to go to my son Isaac or to Michael's size, they just seem so big. <laughs> but anyway, these I um, knit out of a yarn from, I think it's Hobby or Hobie. And this is their Dolce Sock Wool. And the color is just color two. Um, so there you go. I've really enjoyed um, several of the hobby sock yarns. Um, and I'll show you another pair in a minute. Um, this is just a 75 superwash wool, 25% polyamide um, yarn. And it's got that little bit more rustic feel to it, but a really nice yarn to work with. And um, it's got these quite even speckles. You can even see like on this side, they're just, it's almost like polka dots. Yeah, like look at that one. And then the gradient kind of fade in and out of the lighter to darker. I find it interesting here, it faded more through here. So you get a harsher contrast than I did. I don't know, maybe that's that way too, but anyway. Um, I would, I did not make these match in the placement of the fade, um, because I would not have had enough yarn to do so. I would have had to do all contrasting cuffs, heels and toes, and I still might not have, cause it's a fairly long, you know, fading pattern. Um, so I just let them be like this and I think they're great. And he has, he's seen these in the progress and is excited for them, so that's great. These are a 72 stitch count sock, and the patterning on them, I did a two by two rib, and then um, this is just two rows of knit two, purl two, and two rows of plain knitting. Um, so kind of a waffle texture with just my typical heel flap. I do knit the heel flap longer for Michael and um, Isaac because they need that extra room in, because they have wide feet as well. So they need that extra room up over the heel. So I knit this heel flap is 36 rows. So 18 slip stitches. I always do a slip stitch heel. And um, that gives them some extra step because that gives them a longer gusset here. And um, yeah, so those are finished and I'm excited to be able to pass those on to him. All right, those are my finished objects. Is that it? I have one more finished object. I just realized that. So this is a crochet finished object. So first off, a little story. I have this little, it's like a trivet, but I use it as a coaster on my nightstand. And my grandmother made this and I inherited it along with um, my sister, Deborah, who is Candy Shop Yarns. And I inherited our grandmother's sewing supplies and um, we inherited her steel crochet hooks and some crochet thread and her buttons and things like that. Um, and we're definitely the, the biggest crafters and makers probably in our family. And, um, anyway, I have had this on my nightstand for years, years and years since she passed basically. And it's just my coaster, you know, I put my water on there every night and it's just really cute. 
made out of these hexagons and I keep, and it's, it's two layers. And I've looked at this several times and thought, how did she make that? I wanted to know how she made it. And I'm looking at it now. I didn't actually, I, this was in the washing machine when I decided to do this. So I wasn't actually looking right at it. I was doing it from memory and I would change some things, but I thought I'm going to, it's just hexagons. It's eight hexagons. I'm going to figure out how to do this. So I got out some um, crochet or some cotton. Um, I used, let's see if I can pull this out. I used, again, this is Rainbow by Hobby, and it's um, a fingering weight cotton yarn. Um, it's just 100% cotton. These are each 50 grams and have about 186 yards. And I have it in a bunch of different colors. Let's see, I've got my fun basket here. So these are all the Hobby yarns here. Over here I have, um, I never know how to say this. I think it's Sheepius, but it's the Katona. Um, and this is also a cotton fingering weight, but this is in little 25 gram balls. And um, I bought a whole bunch of this with the plan to make a million wondrous dishcloths, the pattern by Jules Hill of So Sweet Violet, which is an awesome pattern. And I made a few of them, but then I didn't keep going with that because, you know, typical. My, my, my uh, plans are often bigger than my accomplishment capabilities or attention span is actually what it is. But anyway, I pulled out some of those colors and I made uh, my own version of this little hexagon. Again, hot pad, trivet, coaster. I use mine as a coaster. This one will probably be a hot pad. Um, it is fingering weight cotton, but it is two layers. So, you know, it's got some heat protection there and it was just really fun to make. So I just made eight hexagons. I chose to do two of each color and then I, um, just seamed them together and then blocked it. And that was really fun. I actually had a blast making this. I don't know why I like sometimes just get like, okay, I want to know how to make this. I get obsessed and then I just hyper focus and get it all done. But that was really fun to make. I don't know that I'll make a bunch more of them, but I did it. Although I'm looking at this one now and I love the flower that came from having the, um, I did a, I'll put a, a link below to the one I did, um, which is a no gap one. So you don't use chain spaces to make your corners like chain. You don't chain two in your corners. You do a double crochet, treble crochet, double crochet, all in the same stitch to get your corners. And, um, so that's the one I, I made, but I really like how this, the chain two space gives you almost like this flower shape right here. So if I were to make another one of these, I would make it with thread um, rather than the yarn, and I would do it with the chain spaces at the corners, but I really had fun doing that. Made me think of my grandma, my grandmother. She, she was a very skilled and talented maker and gardener and classy, classy, classy lady. All right, next up in my works in progress is this Starburst blanket. This is, I've shown these blankets before. This is almost done. Um, this is Sleep Under the Stars and it's actually released by Paintbox Yarns. You can find it for free. You can, I'll put a link below, but you can find the pattern for free. And I am crocheting this in yarns from Hobby Lobby. They are um, Sweet Delight by Baby B. And the colors are, let's see if I can get the colors right. Baby Sage and Flannel. I think that one's Flannel. Flannel Marled is what this gray one is. It's not very marled. There are a few places in the gray where you will see 
a little bit of color change, but it's it's not like right here. See that spot? But it's pretty, pretty uniform. And then this um, kind of tan color is called Sand Castle. So those are the three colors I'm using. And this one is almost done. I think I am doing now, if I can remember right, I think I do one more stripe of Sand Castle and then I'm done. I might do a border on this one. I probably won't. It just finishes so nicely. And isn't that cute? And it's just be a little blanket. It's just a, a baby blanket. So that will go into my gift box. And I really love it. These are so fun to make. And this yarn is really nice to work with. I'm not you know, the biggest fan of acrylic yarns in general, it's not my favorite to work with. I don't have a problem with them in general. I just don't enjoy working with them as much. Um, but when you're gifting baby items, I try to make them very easy care. Um, and so this is a very easy care yarn, but it's so pleasant to work with. It's just very soft. It's not squeaky, you know, on your hook. It's not stiff. It's got a good amount of stretch and bounce to it. And I really enjoy it. And it is, oh, it's a 60% acrylic and 40% polyamide. And it is um, 115 grams and 377 yards. So I would call it, a, it's, it's a DK weight, really. Anyway. So that has been really fun, and I'm hoping to finish that up today. Really enjoying that one. I made, I think this is my third of these blankets, the Sleep Under the Stars blankets that I've made in the last few months. So um, I think it's my fifth of these blankets overall. All right, I am... You know what? I don't think I actually made much progress on this. I've started working on it again, but it may not be very far. I can't remember when I showed it last. So if I haven't made much progress, I mean, I know I've made at least a couple rows, but this is a granny stripe scrap blanket that I am making also in a baby size blanket. So it's just that wide. And um, I... I'm just using, doing this because I want to use my scraps, not because I have something specific I'm making it for. But again, it will probably go into my gift, but it will probably be a gift for, um, it'll be, have to be a gift for somebody who is okay with taking care of wool. I was going to say knits, but wool makes for um, babies. So this one, I'm just using up my scraps and I'm currently using this colorway and I don't, I'm pretty sure this is also a candy shop yarns color, but I do not have a label on it. Again, these are scraps and remnants. So most of them are just, un, I, don't, I don't know who they're from, but I have all my little bits here in this bag by Black Pearl Magic. Um, and I'm using a, 3.5 millimeter hook for that. I forgot to mention the hook for this Sleep Under the Stars blanket. Let me see if I can see. Should I put my hook back in here? Hopefully I did. Do you ever do that where you just misplace them? This is a four millimeter, so it's a G, a USG. And um, yeah, and a 3.5 for this one. And they're just so fun. Our granny stripe blanket's just so much fun. All right. For some reason, I'm just really loving the crochet right now. I want to make so many crocheted items. Just craving the crocheted items. So that is that. All right. Now, the downside about crochet, oh, reach, Ugh. for me, not for everybody, is that I can't do it in the dark. I can't do it at a movie. I have to look at my crochet, but I can knit in the dark. Well, last night, my family and I went to see a movie. We saw Sound of Freedom um, starring Jim Caviezel, which is um, about, 
It's, it's based on the story of Tim Ballard, who is actually a local here in Utah, who um, is just an amazing and inspirational man who fights child trafficking. And um, it's about his first operation that made him decide to do this entirely full time. Anyway, phenomenal movie emotional, so good. I can't recommend it enough. I'm actually going to put a link below. If you want to see this movie, please go see it. Even if you can't afford tickets, people are paying forward tickets. So you can go and claim a free ticket. It's not free as in there, the company is just giving them away. It's free as in people like me who have seen it, have been inspired by it and have purchased tickets so somebody else can go and see it. Um, so if you want to see it, you can go for free or you can go see it and you can pay it forward too. But the whole point that I was getting at is that movie was amazing, but I wanted to have some socks to knit on while I was in the movie. I knew that it was going to be tense and I needed something to do with my hands. Um, and so I cast on another pair of socks and look how cute these are. And I cast, they were at, right at this point. I think I had knit three rows when I went into the movie. So that was how much I got done in the movie. So these are really fun and they are another hobby yarn. Apparently I'm doing hobby yarns right now. That's so funny because I have quite a few. I did just also order some more, but that yarn will sit, you know, and wait in your stash for a long time. And then just all of a sudden I'm pulling it all out. So this is from Silly, this is a Silly Socks yarn. And this color is just color nine. Yep, color nine. And it's really fun. So I think the Silly Socks, the idea is they are kind of variegated, but in longer variegations. And so it's just kind of crazy. They're just kind of crazy. They're not necessarily stripes. It's just crazy yarn and they're really fun. So, um, again, this is a 64 stitch sock and I'm using my 40 inch cable chow goo 2.25 millimeter. I normally knit 20 rows for my cuff. I was in a movie, so I just knit it until I thought, well, that's probably enough cuff. And then I went on. So I'm going to count and see how many rows I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I did 19. That was pretty good judgment. I think I did a pretty good job judging that in the dark. Not that it would have mattered if it was 24 or 17. I mean, it's, it's fine, but it's just kind of interesting that I got that close without, um, counting it just based on habit. So anyway, those are pretty fun. I really didn't want to cast anything else off because I real cast anything on because I really want to finish things up. So I want to finish that um, Sleep Under the Stars blanket. I want to finish my crochet granny squares, which I haven't talked about forever. I haven't worked on them, but I got them back out and I counted them. I only need nine more squares and then I can put this blanket together. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time like making myself do it, but it's all out, it's ready. So as soon as I finish Sleep Under the Stars, I'm going to go and tackle that one and get it done and put them together and put a border on it. And I'll be so happy. And then what was the other thing I wanted to finish? I'm not really worried about finishing this granny stripe blanket because it's just, I haven't had it on the hook that long. And um, so I'll get to it soon. It'll be fine. But I have this other blanket I will show next time. It's um, a knit two panel blanket, marled garter stitch. I'll show it to you next time. But my daughter-in-law has been doing most of the knitting on it lately. Whenever she's over, she'll knit on that. So anyway, I want to finish things. I want to clear the needles and the hooks and just have, you know, clean slate. And then I am going to <laughs> 
you know what? I'll just talk about that project next time. I have a project that I'm excited to make that my kids are kind of like, my, my youngest daughter thinks it's great. My other kids are like, well, really? You want to do that? But I'm excited about it. So I will talk about that next time. Okay, so those are all my finished objects and my works in progress. So pattern news, just my update on pattern news is that Ochre Sunset is in testing right now. I have awesome test knitters and an amazing tech editor. And um, this pattern is on on schedule, on, what's the, on track. It's on track to be released um, the first week of August, probably August 4th is the plan. Um, and from what I understand, you know what, I'll just verify that before I say anything about it. But um, I just am really loving it, that loving seeing what people are making with it and um, or the colors that people are using to make their own ochre sunset wrap. It's just so such a fun knit. So just really excited about that. It's just one of the most exciting things for me to see the patterns that I've designed come to life in other people's colorways on their needles, you know. Um, also, I was looking at Scrappy Bias Shawl. So the Scrappy Bias Shawl was my first ever pattern that I released. It's a free pattern. It's on Ravelry and at Yarnberry.com. And um, I just went the other day and went through the hashtag for the Scrappy Bias Shawl. And I am still blown away by the thousands of people who have made this shawl. It is just really simple. It's more a formula than anything else. But if you haven't knit a Scrappy Bias shawl, I think we're going to have to do a knit along in the fall. I think we will do a Scrappy Bias shawl knit along in the fall because if I remember correctly, that pattern is seven years old this year and it's just so fun. I just, and I haven't really thought about it for a long time. I, I have this issue and I don't know if anybody else is like this, but I'm always like on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And I forget sometimes to celebrate the accomplishments or the things from before, right? To appreciate, appreciate. That's a better way to say it. I mean, celebrate is good too, but just appreciate it. So I want to give some love to Scrappy Bias Shell. And um, so I think we're going to do a knit along. If anybody's interested, let me know if you would be interested in making a Scrappy Bias Shell by commenting down below. Book recommendation. Okay. So I, a while back, had um, recommended the book the survivors by jane harper and i had so many of you comment and say if you liked her book if you liked that book you would love the dry which is also by jane harper and um i thought okay i'm gonna read some other stuff but then i'll come back to that and put it in my list and for sure about i think it's about three weeks ago maybe a little less. I was like, I'm ready for that. I'm ready to read that. So I went and looked at it and I was like, wait, The Dry is the first of three books. It's um, all the same um, main character. His name is Aaron Falk. And um, Jane Harper is an Australian author and all of her books take, take place in Australia. And um, I really enjoyed The Survivors. So I thought, okay, all right, we'll dig into this. But I, I didn't know like if it was going to be like a cliffhanger at the end of each book, but it wasn't. So it's, it kind of reminds me of maybe like, you know, Agatha Christie, where you've got the same main character, but each book is a sta standalone in like her Miss Marple or Poirot series, right? Um, and so I read The Dry and it was really, really, really good. It was so good. And then I read the second book. So this is actually a three book re recommendation. The second book is Forces of Nature. That one was very good. But then the last one was, is called Exiles. And it was the best. I loved it so much. I love 
her writing style. She has, um, Jane Harper has such a great way of unfolding the mystery, still having, like, it's not all about the case. There's a lot of um, interest in the, the characters themselves. You come to really care about the characters. Um, you don't see things coming. They often will surprise you. Um, there's just, yeah, there's just, a, it's just, they're really great. And I also love that they're not graphic. They're not, um, they're not gory. It, it's not going for shock factor. Um, it's not going for like, I don't know, that visceral reaction that some mystery writers or more thriller writers do. Um, but it's still really compelling. Definitely page turners. And I really loved all three books. So highly recommend them. I listened to them on Audible. And um, the narrator, who I can't remember his name right now, but um, I really enjoyed that. I think if I had read it, I wouldn't have gotten the, uh, you know, the Australian accent wouldn't have been present in my mind. Um, and so it really helped me to kind of, I don't know, really sink into it. Um, but yeah, recommend them highly. Super satisfying endings to each one, but especially the third one. So good. So good. So that's my book recommendation for you are to read the Jane Harper books that are all about Aaron Falk and they are called The Dry, Forces of Nature, and Exiles. So good. I think that's everything that I have today. So I am going to, um, oh, I do want to give a little update because I have so many of you ask about our grandson. Um, I should have done that at the beginning because that's what I normally do, but I just was excited to dive in. So um, he is growing and doing well. Today was his actual due date. Um, he was born six weeks early and he is still in the hospital, but he is getting super close to coming home. So he is just doing really well. And my daughter and her husband are awesome. They're amazing parents. I'm so, I'm just proud of them. And, um, he is the cutest little guy. So sweet. So thank you for everybody who has said such kind things, who's offered up prayers or just good thoughts or sweet comments. Really appreciate that. All right. We've did it. We've did it. We have done it. Another episode under our belts. So I'm excited to see you in a couple of weeks where I will give you more updates and hopefully our grandson will be home by then. And yeah, in the meantime, enjoy all of your knitting and um, your making and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>